Thanks for watching this video tutorial on the Audison AF Forza DSP amplifiers. The AF Forza family of amplifiers are compact, powerful, great sounding, and have advanced bit processing for OEM correction and system tuning all built in. This course is on using the configuration wizard built into BitDrive 3.0 and above. One of the great advantages of using BitDrive software is the configuration wizard. It helps you set all the input and output settings and get your system ready to go in a quick and efficient way. While you might not always need to use every feature that's built into the wizard, it is always the quickest way to get your system ready, even if you want to perform some of its functions manually. This tutorial uses the configuration wizard that's in BitDrive version 3.0. Later versions may have slight updates or changes. Before you begin, Where's the test CD? The test tones are now online for you to download. Visit the Audison support page to download them. If a CD is required, you're going to need to burn one. Don't just use a test tone for an older bit device. What sources does my system need? There are four possible combinations. An OEM speaker level source is the default. You can select an aftermarket RCA level preamp source. You can select an optical digital Toslink source, or you can select some combination of one or two plus number three. Is my OEM source a premium amplified system or a base audio deck power system? In modern vehicles, even base audio deck power systems are using delay and phase manipulation. So we recommend using the dephase process after the configuration wizard is complete. In premium amplified systems with dedicated active channels for tweeters, mid ranges and woofers, many skilled bit drive users skip the D equalization and D time steps of the configuration wizard and perform these steps manually. The automated steps are most effective with full range channels, and they may not deliver similar results with high pass or low pass active channels. We'll cover how to do this in the next tutorial on D-Phase. What volume level should I use when I play the test tones? Use the maximum setting that allows unclipped output of the source unit or factory amplifier. To test this, use an oscilloscope to measure the output of the head unit as you play track one, sign sweep. The O-scope function in the bit tune can be used for this test. If you do not have an oscilloscope, set the volume of the head unit to 75%. Opening the wizard. Start by opening the bit drive software and select the bit amplifier we want to configure. In this case, it's an AFM 5.11 bit. Click here to maximize the bit drive software window. As you can see, there are no speakers positioned around the vehicle in the system map on the left. This tells us the device has not been configured yet. This icon at the top, the magic wand, reveals the configuration wizard and the Accordo wizard. Select the configuration wizard. Click here to start. Do you need the optical input? The first option allows you to disable the optical input. It's enabled by default. If your installation includes a DRC AC or DRC MP CAN controller and the optical input isn't being used, it's possible for the system user to accidentally select it with the DRC AC. At that point, the user would lose all system audio until they realized their error and selected the master input again. If the DRCAC is present in the system and the optical input is not being used, we recommend you disable it in this step. Important, never allow any audible safety alerts or notifications to be disabled. 
If you only want to use the optical input, select it here, and then there are a few other steps to follow we will mention later. Click on Next. Configuring the inputs. What is your source? There are four possibilities. Note, if you're only using the optical source, the analog input setup you select is not important. The default setting is high level, OEM speaker level. If you're going to be using an RCA preamplified source, select low level using this switch here. The switch changes the available input configurations. OEM systems have many more possible system types than aftermarket systems require. Note, if you're only using optical, leave the setting in the default position and go to the next step. If you need both high level and low level inputs, start with high level and then change individual channels later as needed. Remember that each input channel can be used with high level or low level inputs, but not with both at the same time. This particular OEM system has four channels of input, two front and two rear. So we'll select that. In this scenario, since we only have front and rear in, the subwoofer signal will be derived from either the front, the rear, or the sum of the two. That's called non-fading base. Use this setting to define where the subwoofer signal content will come from. The front is the default. Some systems need the base to come from the rear, and some customers would like non-fading bass that continues playing regardless of the position of the fader on the OEM head unit. You can edit this later in the mixer if required. When no center input is selected, any center output that you later define will be derived from the internal up mixer using the front left and front right inputs as the stereo signal. This can be edited later. If a center input is selected, the internal up mixer is not used. If no center output channels are selected later in the configuration process, this setting will not affect the final result at all. You can see that the software has assigned input one to left front, input two to right front, input three to left rear, and input four to right rear. Click on next. For OEM speaker level inputs, the default setting is 11 volts AC. This is appropriate for most deck power OEM systems, as well as most OEM amplified systems. When interfacing with OEM amplifiers, we recommend you test the AC voltage of the subwoofer outputs using a quality digital voltmeter. Remember that the AF Forza native high-level inputs handle a maximum of 22 volts AC. If more voltage capability is required, add the optional F4 in expansion card. If you're using an aftermarket source with RCA inputs, you can simply set these values to the published output voltage for the device. If an aftermarket head unit says 5 volt output, set these values to 5 volts. You don't need to use the automated step. These values can be edited later in the inputs if needed. This is a great time to confirm that we've connected all of our inputs correctly. To do that, play track 4, Pink Noise, at about 75% volume on the OEM head unit. You can see that now all of the virtual LEDs are illuminated green. Now, let's use the front rear fader control on the OEM head unit and fade all the way to the front. And then, all the way to the rear. You can see, when we fade to the front, the virtual LEDs for input channels 3 and 4 go dark, while the virtual LEDs for input channels 1 and 2 are still illuminated green. When we fade to the rear, the virtual LEDs for channels 1 and 2 go dark, while the virtual LEDs for channels 3 and 4 stay illuminated green. Now let's use the left-right balance control on the head unit. When we go all the way to the left of the balance control, 
the virtual LEDs for input channel one and three should stay illuminated and the virtual LEDs for input channels two and four go dark. If we balance all the way to the right, LEDs two and four stay illuminated, but LEDs one and three go dark. This tells us we have connected our inputs correctly, front, rear, left, and right. Setting input sensitivity and checking polarity. If you're using a source with aftermarket RCA signals, or if you're using optical as the only input, this step can be skipped. If you'd like to use the wizard to set the input sensitivity for each channel, play track one, the sign sweep track. You can do this manually if you prefer, using the sign sweep track and the virtual LEDs, which have overload indicators built in. Make certain the doors are closed so we don't get chimes playing over the system during this step. Click on start to begin the process or click on next to skip past it. Note. This process usually takes around 90 seconds per channel. If you see small differences in channel levels, that can tell us the balance or fader controls might not have been centered or that the OEM equalization is different from one channel to another channel. For the next step, switch to track three, pulses, and click on start. This will test for input polarity on each channel and for delay on any of the input channels. If you're using an aftermarket source, it's okay to skip over this step as well. Here, you can see all of our input polarities are correct. However, the rear speakers were delayed 0.97 milliseconds relative to the front speakers. And so the bid drive software has delayed the front speakers 0.97 milliseconds to align the front and rear signals. This will allow us to use delay normally when we tune the system and get the results we expect. If any polarities are incorrect, bit drive will correct them in the input EQ if you like. De-equalization. This step can be skipped over if you're using the source with aftermarket RCA signals or if you're using optical as your only input. To perform the DEQ process to smooth out the OEM equalization, play track one again. This process takes about 45 seconds per channel. If you know you're going to want to apply dephase, you may prefer to skip this step and perform EQ manually at the same time that you perform dephase. Please note, that de-equalization does not equalize the sub-base region. If you prefer, after de-equalization is concluded, you can edit the DEQ settings using mono pink noise as the test tone and achieve an even flatter sub-base response. Click on Start to begin the process. Click on Next if you'd like to skip over it. First, you'll see the initial measured response for Channel 1. Then you'll see the corrected response for channel one. Here's the measured response for channel two. Here's the corrected response for channel two. Here's the initial response for channel three. Corrected response for channel three. The initial response for channel four. And the corrected response for channel four. When all the channels are complete, de-equalization is finished. You can repeat the process in case it was interrupted, if the ignition turned out, or if someone accidentally opened the vehicle door in error. When the process is complete, click on Next. You'll be warned to turn down the head unit volume or stop playing the test tone. If you would like to examine the results in more detail, after this process is complete, you can open the input equalization tool and look at the input RTA graph using mono pink noise as a signal. Configuring the outputs. 
a green icon indicates a preamp output of the bit amplifier rather than one of the amplified output channels. A solid orange circle indicates two output channels bridged together to supply even more power to a speaker. Solid circles indicate actively filtered channels with just a single speaker. Circles connected to each other indicate speakers that share a channel that have passive crossover filters. Now, select the output channel diagram that's closest to the speaker system you've installed. The system options presented differ depending on how many output channels your amplifier has. We're using an AFM 5.11 bit in this example. Let's set it up in a pretty standard front, rear, sub configuration. Now you can see that each output channel has been assigned to a particular type of output, front or rear, passive components, or subwoofer. You can't see it, but each output channel has also been assigned a default starting crossover point and slope. See this column where each speaker is default selected to other? This is a drop-down list of all the possible Audison or Hertz speakers you might select. If you select a speaker from the list, we will insert our recommended starting crossover point for that driver set. If you need to edit your outputs for a system that isn't listed here, first click on a system that's similar and then click here so you can edit the system. If you forget to do this, you can edit the system later, but this is the fastest way to do it. Remember that bridging is a function of how you wired the amplifier outputs. Once the amplifier is properly wired, selecting bridge in the bit drive software ensures that both channels will receive the same input signal, that they're affected by a single equalizer control set, a single delay value, a single crossover setting, and a single control for level. Selecting bridged in bit drive without properly wiring the outputs for a bridge configuration can cause poor audio quality. Now we see the window for default volatile data. While this screen is displayed, you want to set the input to optical if that's the only input you're going to use. Only select turn on enable if you want all of these values to be in effect every time the system powers up. For example, if you have a DRC AC and you want it to be the master volume control and you always want the system to turn on at 50% volume, you can select that here. If you're not sure, leave this setting disabled. You can edit it later. Now, turn down the volume of the source unit so we don't damage any speakers. This grayed out screen indicates the data is being transferred from the PC to the bit device. When that process is over, the screen will return to normal. If you select different output channels of the system, you can see the crossover points and the slopes have all been assigned by the configuration wizard. If you try to close the bit drive software, you will be prompted to finalize the device, in case you forgot, and you'll also be prompted to save a copy of the configuration file to the PC. Congratulations, you've completed the configuration wizard. The next tutorial will address manual dephase and some advanced configuration options.